with my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. All the time I was alone. I didn't know where my future is gonna be. If I keep living like this, what's gonna happen to me? At times, I used to get violent. In my childhood, I didn't really feel much that I was loved, uh, you know, physically loved. You know, for example, like, you know, I was told that my father only carried me once when I was a uh, child. Do not remember much, you know, playing with my father, playing with my mother, or, you know, doing things as a family. So I was uh, basically looking for the uh, attention from people, you know, looking for that love and acceptance. I think that I was missing from my family. I was looking for from other people. My name is Ashan, I'm from uh, Brisbane, Australia. I'm the only child uh, in my family. You know, I, I was born in uh, Sri Lanka. My father, he was born Buddhist, but um, he turned out to be an atheist. He didn't believe in any God. But my mother, she was a traditional Catholic. She went to church regularly. She said her prayers uh, uh, at home and um, yeah, uh, as for my father, he was uh, he was more f lived kind of a carefree life. Um, he uh, he uh, had so many friends. Uh, you know, he was uh, loved by every one of his friends. He drank a lot. Uh, and he had regular, you know, late night parties at home uh, with his friends. You know, I thought uh, if my father's friends accepted me then, uh, you know, I'll be accepted by my father as well. So, you know, I, I'm a person who I looked up to him because uh, I thought his lifestyle was uh, the way to go, you know, carefree life. You know, you live, live for the moment uh, kind of thing, you know, live life to the fullest and everything else will take care of itself. And, um, you know, I started going to school and uh, I basically, uh, you know, started uh, hanging out with the, uh, the cool kids um, in school, you know. Um, when I was that kind of, I was really good in sports, all the sports I did. Uh, and I did athletics, rugby, uh, soccer, and, um, you know, for, to my father's delight, I was good in every sport I did uh, back in school and uh, I did didn't pay much attention to uh, my education as such, but I was uh, only into sports. And, you know, my dream was to, you know, one day play f um, rugby union for the Wallabies or uh, for the All Blacks, uh, you know, because I love the Hakka. <laughs> so this was uh, the kind of, uh, you know, the mentality and life I uh, grew up with, you know, um, like uh, people, everyone in school, you know, they knew me as the person who, you know, did athletics. That was my identity uh, in school and, uh, you know, I want, I achieved, I did, I worked really hard to uh, become like the best and that was my only goal and whenever I failed, uh, it really affected me. I also knew that uh, if I was good in my uh, sports, I get accepted from my father and also from his, uh, you know, entire family who uh, loved sports. As I was uh, going up, I mean, school, uh, you know, from probably age of probably 15, 
I started, uh, you know, got together with my friends and started watching, you know, pornography. I got addicted to it. You know, I, there was not a day that went by without me, you know, watching porn. And, uh, you know, the world, everyone around me told me that it's normal, <laughs> that everyone does it and there's nothing wrong with it. So this is the mentality I grew up with. And then uh, I, I could not go without, uh, you know, watching porn. and. Uh, this grew out to be an addiction and uh, you know i could not have a serious relationship with a girl you know i was uh, i was it didn't help me that uh, i was also a shy person so like these addictions did not help me because every time i get into a relationship uh, you know these addictions keep uh, coming back and i keep falling back into them yeah so you know as i was growing up i was uh, looking for that acceptance and love that I really did not have when I was a child. So, you know, these things led me into you know, wanting to watch this pornography, do whatever uh, my friends did, like, you know, they, they drank, uh, you know, they got into drugs. So uh, I went with the world, you know, I thought to get that acceptance from the world, I did uh, what my friends and uh, everyone thought uh, was the right thing to do. You know, after I finished school uh, back in Sri Lanka, like I, I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. You know, I had no, I had no direction. Um, I was a bit of a confused person. Parents asked me, "Do you want to go abroad and you know maybe settle down, and do some, you know, uh, get into a university there?" You know, I had no desire to really, uh, you know, study further or do anything like that. But uh, I thought that was a good idea, you know. I, I thought I wanted freedom. Freedom and, you know, it'll be good. I can do whatever I want if I go abroad. Came here on a student visa to do my degree. And um, that's how I ended up here in uh, Australia. After I moved to uh, Australia, I went to Melbourne. I studied there in a uni university. And uh, once I came here, you know, I had all the freedom I wanted. You know, say it's a free country and you can do, can live your life wherever you want. I thought this was life. Wow, you know, I've got everything I wanted. And um, once I moved here, <laughs> kind of uh, met similar uh, friends. Uh, back like in Sri Lanka, you know, they they used to drink heaps, uh, you know, they loved their parties, smoking, and um, this was basically uh, the life, so, um, and I have kind of loved it, uh, because, you know, I was here, I was doing what I wanted, enjoying most freedom, you know, my parents were, they sold their only house uh, back in Sri Lanka to, uh, you know, send me here and for my education but here I was living my life you know the way I wanted and uh, sometimes uh, you know we used to do, drink for two three days uh, at a stretch without a break and um, you know I, I got into regular fights uh, sometimes you know I got um, you know got into fights with some of uh, my own friends you know once uh, one of my friends just uh, hit me with an iron bar uh, and I had about 30 stitches um, in my head and another time um, you know I uh, had a, uh, got into a fight in a nightclub and I had to do plastic surgery to my nose you know this life all this life was giving me a thrill uh, and I thought this was the way to live uh, life you know live life to the fullest All the time I was alone, you know, I felt this loneliness. I felt like my life was going nowhere, you know. I, I didn't know where my future is gonna be and if I keep living like this, what's gonna happen to me? I didn't know any of that. Inside me, I was kind of empty. That I didn't know what, how to describe, why I didn't have any answers for it. But uh, that's what I really felt in deep within me. So somehow I managed to, uh, you know, finish my uh, university studies, and um, you know I got a job in a bank. 
you know, I didn't have a plan. Now all of a sudden, uh, I'm getting all this uh, money uh, after I started working, and you know, only thing I knew was drinking, partying, you know, spending away all my money. And my parents, you know, they this had to sell their own house to uh, send me money uh, for my education. But um, I was uh, spending them away lavishly, you know, without thinking. Uh, about anyone else, uh, somehow my, I managed to get my parents down here um, in Australia. About 16 years ago, you know, I started getting these um, very severe headaches. Uh, I was in hospital for up to two, three days, you know, once in three, four months, you know, shouting and screaming in excruciating pain. And um, doctors really couldn't figure out what was uh, going on with me. You know, I went into so many different specialists from one hospital to another. I tried so many different types of medication, but there was really no answer. You know, they took so many MRI scans and uh, CT scans, and uh, they couldn't really figure out what was going on with me. And they said there's nothing they can really do to help me. These things were affecting my life. You know, my work was affected, um, you know, I couldn't do any sports, I couldn't stay up late, you know, everything I did uh, was aff affected by this sickness and, you know, my identity became, became these headaches because everyone knew that I get these headaches all of a sudden and I had to go, go and ad be admitted to the hospital. This is a time when everything was going really bad, um, you know, the weight of my sin, like, you know, overtook my life, uh, I couldn't uh, really handle it anymore. You know, I was, I went into severe depression, like um, everything around me was so dark, you know, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't, um, I couldn't go to work. Life basically came to a halt, you know, I realized my parents couldn't help me, you know, all the friends I had, they couldn't help me. The best doctors in this world couldn't help me. I really thought my life was gonna end here. When I was in this kind of situation where I got this uh, random email out of nowhere saying, uh, you know, brother Inuk is coming to Brisbane for, to do a retreat. Inuk and me, we went a long way back, you know. He was like one of my best friends. He was the head of a gang back in the day. His life was all of a sudden transformed. Now he doesn't do what he did back in the day. And, uh, you know, he goes around preaching uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was shocked when I heard it first, but then again, um, I lost completely touch with uh, him. So here I was 10 years later, I heard he's coming, you know, I just thought, you know, I want to see this guy. I tried to call him, I tried to Facebook message him, but I, I couldn't con uh, contact him. So I saw on that email that there was a prayer meeting just before the day of the retreat. I remember uh, I went there, there was someone else who was doing the prayer meeting uh, at that moment. and. I received a word of knowledge in this prayer meeting saying uh, there's a person who's uh, been suffering from severe headaches for more than 10 years and he's going, the Lord is going to touch him and heal him. You know, at this moment, I did not believe uh, that a God can come and uh, heal me when there's no hope in this world. But my mother really believed uh, that it was for me anyway. And uh, you know, after the prayer meeting, I met my friend. Um, was so happy to meet him after a long time. and. Uh, he really convinced me and said um, he should come for this uh, retreat tomorrow. I didn't have anything in mind. I wasn't sure whether I was going to come or not. But uh, the next day, it was uh, actually, I still remember it was the day of my birthday. It was uh, 4th of September 2015. And, uh, you know, for my birthday, I had a small uh, lunch at home. And um, uh, after, after this, I just thought I'll go and drop in. Maybe I can talk to my friend again. And I went for the retreat, you know, the first day um, I wasn't very impressed. I just thought uh, it's, it's a good retreat, but it's not for me. It's, uh, there's nothing I can gain from that place. But, um, you know, at the end of the retreat, I went and uh, spoke back to with my friend and he was uh, telling me, you know, tomorrow is the day that uh, tomorrow is uh, like you have to come to and see what's happening tomorrow. Anyway, um, I went home. I wasn't really convinced uh, that I was going to come the next day. But um, I went home and uh, the next day morning I woke up and uh, 
when I woke up, I don't know what it was, something told me, just go for this retreat, just go. When I went there, I heard the word of God like I've um, never heard before in my life. It was like someone was directly speaking into my heart and like, you know, saying my story there. You know, I had tears a couple of times. The retreat went on and um, I was uh, listening to it. And then um, at the end of the retreat, there was this uh, anointing service uh, they were doing. Um, they were all uh, holding hands together and uh, calling out for this Holy Spirit. I don't know if I've heard of a Holy Spirit before, but I really didn't, I didn't know whether I knew about it. Uh, I've heard of it uh, before. The next thing I knew was, uh, you know, something really went in uh, my heart and, you know, I was all of a sudden calling out for God, you know. I was, uh, I was saying, God, come and save me, you know, I've had enough of this life. I've, uh, I've lived enough this way and I want to change, God. Come and, come and change me, come and transform my life, I was saying in my heart. But um, as soon as I went there to the front, and all I remember was uh, someone's hands coming close to me. And that's all I remember. I fell to the ground and, you know, I've never even fainted in my life before. I, uh, I fell and I thought it was a couple of seconds. I woke up all of a sudden, you know, my friend said I was down for some time, but you know, who knows, I don't know. I don't know what happened, I woke up. And all of a sudden, I woke up, I knew things were different. You know, I wasn't the same person as I was before. I felt like, you know, a lifetime of weight was taken off my body and my mind. I felt so light. There was this unimaginable peace, calmness, and uh, uh, that was going through my uh, uh, going through my body. You know, I wanted to just uh, scream and shout. And uh, at that moment, uh, for the first time in my life, I experienced the unconditional love of God in my life. I was so overjoyed, and uh, you know, all these all these uh, years, you know, I was. Uh, I was trying to get that happiness from alcohol, from drinking, you know, from parties, from uh, with my friends, from um, you know, uh, all these different things. It's, it was like all the things I was looking for, I was doing, uh, just was fulfilled in me in an instant. And this is like ev what every everything that I was looking for for in my life was given to me in just an instant and uh, there started my transformation. All my addictions were completely broken one by one. You know, I, I was experiencing the love of Jesus in my life constantly, you know. The Word of God really became alive in me. And, uh, you know, all my life, all this time, you know, I was looking for something, you know. I was looking for it in the wrong places, from doing the wrong things. But here I was, you know, filled with the love of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit. When I, as soon as I experienced the love of Jesus, you know, I was weeping and crying. You know, they were, they were not tears of sadness, but uh, tears of joy. Everything just came to me like a splash. And, uh, you know, he assured me he was right there with me, even when I was offending him, even when I was going against God in my life. He touched someone like me, a sinner, who, was, who had no direction in life, who was going the wrong way. He touched me and healed me. Since then, like all my addictions were broken and um, you know, I started experiencing His love more and more when I read the Word of God, it became alive in me. You know, uh, it, the things they did in the Catholic Church, the Mass became alive in me. You know, I, I can't, uh, I started praying and uh, you know, it was a transformation like uh, no other. And, uh, and today I have peace, joy, and love in my heart that I've never had before. Um, I'm currently uh, volunteering uh, with the CRL. It's uh, the community of the risen Lord. Uh, you know, I work with their young adults uh, group and uh, they're an awesome bunch of people. You know, all my, my desire, my only desire is to bring what I got from Jesus to bring this to other people. So I work with the young adults group um, in, of CRL. And um, also I, uh, I volunteer with, um, you know, Rosie's, it's called Friends for the Homeless. Uh, you know, I, I, I volunteer with them, you know, back in the day, 
you know, I spend my time, all my uh, spare time, you know, uh, doing all these things and now and spending all my money away and now, you know, God has shown me something more. I've received everything I wanted, so I give this time uh, now to helping uh, other people. And um, I'm also, you know, dis trying to discern my vocation in life at this moment. Uh, you know, I have a strong feeling that God is calling me to uh, give up everything and, uh, you know, serve the poor and the marginalized in the society. Uh, work with them and uh, and at the moment I'm taking spiritual uh, direction and uh, things didn't really stop there you know after my transformation you know my father who was an atheist who lived, lived a very different lifestyle he said uh, all of a sudden one day he came and said you know I want to go and see what this retreat is and uh, you know I um, there was, I called these guys and said, uh, is there another retreat? And they said, yeah, there's one in Adelaide. I booked tickets for both my parents um, to go for this retreat. And, uh, you know, uh, both my father and mother went and, you know, I, I prayed for my father's conversion like I've never, never prayed before. God touched him just the same way as, his, uh, as he did, did my, uh, my life. And, uh, you know, I remember my father saying, you know, when he went um, to the retreat, he said, uh, Jesus, you know, I can't, I don't believe in you. I don't know you, but I can see some change in my son's life. And if you're real, just show me a sign. And, um, you know, at the prayer, prayer over time, uh, he experienced the love of God and now he's uh, baptized Catholic. He actually got baptized uh, last year. As a family, things have not been perfect, but we have a peace that we have never had as a family before. You know, I thank and praise him in every day of my life. If that's all I can do, I'll do it for the rest of my life. If I can give you any bit of advice for anyone that is listening at this moment, no matter what you are going through in life, is it sadness, is it depression, or everything is going well in life, and you feel like you're searching for something, there's something missing in your life, then I tell you, I truly tell you, that Jesus is the answer. He is the Savior who can save you. Jesus, He is my Savior, He is my life and my future. My name is Ashan Dizoisa and this is my story. A lot of talk in our church today about the new evangelization and we might ask, well, what's new about the new evangelization? One thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be Catholic, should already be Christian. Individuals, families, communities, whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel. And so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith, of evangelization. Another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that and the new media, and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today.